and evictions that were beginning in Mavoko, we had some illusion that there was still existing some humanity, some basic respect for the law and human rights in the Kenya Kwanza regime. We were holding on to the promise Mr. William Ruto made during the campaigns that the forceful evictions and demolition of dwellings would be a thing of the past. It is a fact that in July 2022, during the launch of the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, Ruto promised that he would put to an end the culture of illegal evictions of people and property demolition if elected president. He went on to promise that where necessary, affected people would be provided with enough notice and compensation and compensation promptly paid. Well, it is October 2023 and a human tragedy is unfolding before the eyes of Kenyans under Ruto's watch and his loud silence, in fact order. What has gone on here in Mapoko these past few days is not, not just inhumane, it is also ungodly. What is going on here is false eviction, the exact crime Ruto promised to bring to an end in July last year. It's a gross violation of human rights, the right to adequate housing at a time the administration purports to be working to ensure that everyone has shelter. What's going on here indicates a systematic disregard of recognized human rights standards on the part of the state. The affected families, some among the poorest of the poor, and their upcoming middle class have not only witnessed lifelong savings demolished and crushed to ashes. They have been left to fend for themselves on the streets without basic shelter. Children who are learning in some of the schools here have seen their classrooms flattened into open fields, the upcoming exams standing. A regime whose top leadership never missed an opportunity to show that they are deputies of Christ have, or is presiding over the demolition of houses of worship. The evictions have taken place just as the rains are beginning to set in. They are taking place in bad weather, without any compensation, alternative accommodation, or access to safe and secure food, safe drinking water and sanitation, and medical services. The evictions have been accompanied by the excessive use of force by the police <coughs> and local authorities. They have been intended to inflict inhuman pain and damage. And you can see my back. There are reports of injuries and theft of property belonging to the people whose suffering and loss is already too grim. There was definitely no or inadequate prior eviction notice. Kenyans in 20. 2009 evictions and resettlement guidelines require notice to be written or published in the official government gazette 90 days ahead of time. Yet, within minutes of a court ruling, people have lost their homes and their livelihoods. People have been left homeless and destitute without means of earning a livelihood and with no effective access to legal or other remedies. Nobody gave these people a chance to pursue further legal redress. Someone who seemed to have known how the court was going to rule stood ready to swing into action and inflict maximum pain on residents immediately the ruling was made. Above all, this destruction of life the lifelong savings of people has come at a time that Kenyans are struggling with extremely high taxes, high costs of living, and a collapsing Kenya shilling. Without compensation, those who have lost homes will certainly never be able to rebuild. 
People have suffered here because of failure of the states to control speculation in land, housing, and property. One thing that's being used against the opposition to the demolitions is that East African Portland Cement owns the land and the titles were fraudulent. We therefore demand investigations and accountability of everyone, private and public, involved in this. But secondly, know that Kenya, Kenya uh, know that Portland is majority owned by the government. The demolitions are they, are they necessary? Victims are Kenyans. Was there another solution? Government has always settled people everywhere. We even have a settlement fund to get people land. We are the case of Waitiki land in Likoni, which was resolved by the settlement fund to pay the owner and the unsettled squatters, and that was a private land. Why couldn't this matter be handled the same way? Was, was this, was this a great and urgent use of the land where demolition was done that so greatly overweighed people's lives and savings? What is the urgent use that could not allow people time to move out by, say, next year? Are there personal interests riding on the guise of public interest? Does the East African Portland Cement understand that there are things people can do to fight back and even end its existence as a company? We are, taking, we are talking about people who most likely use the company's cement to construct houses only for those same houses to be destroyed in the name of the same company. As a party, we, as, as me, we can't let this continue to go on unchallenged. We are determined to ensure that cruel crime is answered for. Somebody will have to take the responsibility for this bestiality. The Kenya Kwanzaa administration must immediately halt any further demolitions. We must share with the victims and the country the immediate plans to pay compensation for the property that has been unlawfully destroyed and to find alternative settlement for the victims. This brutality will not go unchallenged. This brutality will have to be answered for and accounted for. If the government does not act, we will help the people to act. As a meal. Thank you. Maona tumekuja hapa kama wana Kenya na tena kama viongozi wa Azimio la Umoja wa Kenya coalition tumeona kwa runinga yale mbaya yale kuna fanyika hapa wengine wetu wakiongozwa na kiongozi wetu hapa mchimea Kalonzo Musyoka walikuja hapa wakati mambo ilianza hapa walikuja pamoja na gavana wa Vinya wa hapa county ya Machakos wakajaribu kushawishi hao watu ili wao na moyo ya utu waache kuharibu mali ya watu ambao wanakaa hapa lakini yale yote ambayo waliyasema wali iliingia kwenye sikio ya fisi hakuna chochote jamaa wameendelea kufanya kazi yao ya kubomoa Mahakama ilitoa uamuzi siku ya Ijumaa. Na siku hiyo ya Ijumaa watu tayari walianza kufanya kupomoa manyumba hapa. Nani alijua ati uamuzi itakuwa namna gani? Walikuwa wameshajua tayari uamuzi itatoka vile ilitoka. Hii njewe ndio nyesha ya kwamba mahakama zetu imeshikwa teke, nisema juzi ati mahakama na bunge letu wa kitaifa wameshikwa te, teke mateke Ma, ma, wamefinya makende
Sasa tuko na bunge hanizi haina chochote manake bunge yenyewe juzi ilipitisha sheria ya kujinyima nafasi ya kukagua ununuzi ya bidhaa ya umma bunge linatakana iwe inatetea mali ya umma lakini bunge tayari imeshatoa kupitisha sheria kusema bunge hawezi kuangalia na kukagubua vile serikali inauza mali ya umma hakuna haja ya kuna bunge tuko vile vile na maspika ambaye wanafanya siasa kiolela spika wenyewe wanaongea juu ya mambo ambayo yanakuja mbele ya bunge katika mkutano wa hadhara katika kanisa vile wao wataamua katika bunge kwa hiyo maspika yote wawili wa senate na national assembly ni wale watu ambaye hawafai wawe kama maspika wao ni aibu kubwa kwa taifa la Kenya na vile siku hizi mambo inatoka kule ikulu unasema ipitishi bila ilivyo na wabunge hawapewi nafasi ya kuongea vizuri juu ya yale masuala yanayokuja kwa bunge kwa hivyo sasa wa Kenya hawana kinga pande hii bunge teke mateka pande nyingine mahakama mateka sasa tuko na pahali ambayo natembea peke yake hakuna mtu anaweza kuzuia wao kufanya chochote ametangaza siku ya Ijumaa na kazi imeanza sasa na umeona askari wake wako hapa umeona vile wamekaa kule kama ile umbo ya nini <laughs> ati wanafanya kazi hii kazi ya kuamua mali ya watu si kazi ya askari kulinda kuna kazi ambayo inatakana na askari wetu wafanye kupigana na mashabab na kulinda wakenya wengine ambao wanavamiwa na uhalifu lakini sasa hawa askari wamekuja hapa kutetea uhalifu yale ambayo yanafanyika hapa ni uhalifu ni unyama ni aibu katika taifa letu la Kenya tunalaani vikali kama wanazimio sasa ndio ni sasa Bosa mi ho. 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 Bosa mi ho.